Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Grace. She lived in a green house on the corner, and she loved her mother, father, and sister very much. She loved the cat, too, even though the cat didn't always love her. She loved stories, and her favorites were the ones that began with Once Upon a Time and ended with Happily Ever After. She lived a happy life, but time went on, as it always does, and brought me here today to tell you my story and what I've learned so far in my short 17 years of life here on planet Earth. Now, in some ways, I haven't changed much at all from the little girl I used to be, and I'm mostly just your average teenage girl trying to find her place in the world. But there are things that I've learned that have left me forever changed, and the world has formed me in ways that are irreversible, as it does to all of us, and like so many of us, in ways that are almost entirely invisible to everyone around us. What if I told you I have an eating disorder? I found that people look at you differently the moment you tell them you have a mental disorder. And the most infuriating thing is that most of their prejudices come from stereotypes. And where stereotypes come from, I have no idea, because I have yet to run across a single one that resembles anything close to the truth. The struggle we face every single day is the struggle between wanting the truth to be heard and not wanting to come across as mental and fragile and pathetic because stereotypes are hard to crack, and anorexic is one of the ugliest labels I've ever had pinning me down. Time and time again, the media places on our tired shoulders the blame for this horrible burden we bear, but the truth is we can hardly take responsibility for something outside our control because developing an eating disorder is over 50% genetic, and the rest is what doctors call a perfect storm. Any number of things could happen to turn your world into enough of a perfect storm for genetics to kick in. And every person with an eating disorder has a right to say, don't judge me until you've walked in my shoes. Eating disorders are not a choice. And if they were, no one who knew their reality would ever choose one. And the reality is this, who would choose a chronic mental disorder that meant you had to fight that much harder every single day just to treat yourself with the love and care you deserve. Eating disorders have the highest mortality rate out of any mental illness and are the third most common mental illness among adolescents. In America, 20 million women and 10 million men suffer from an eating disorder. Without treatment, 20% of people diagnosed with an eating disorder die. And even with treatment, only 60% make a full recovery. The day I began treatment was one of the hardest days of my life. I didn't know it then, but I would spend around three months in treatment. I was lucky. Some people aren't. Some people are there for much longer, and not just once, because the thing about eating disorders, they just keep coming back. I was also blessed to be able to live at home while going through treatment, a luxury not everyone gets. Girls at my treatment center were from across the country and beyond, from places like Tennessee, Mexico, and even Taiwan. Now, there are many different treatment centers for eating disorders, and they all carry slightly different philosophies about the best ways to treat them, but the one I was at worked something like this. Almost school-like, we came to the clinic every day. The uniform? Pajamas. So we're more comfortable. In a nice name for one of the hardest things I've ever had to do, the mellow plan. In short, be a couch potato. You sit or you sleep. There was a point where the only outing I had each week other than treatment and the most standing I was doing at a time was at church on Sunday mornings. They gradually add exercise back in as you move through treatment, but coming from an athlete, being well enough to walk for 10 minutes a day felt like a pretty crappy consolation prize. The way food worked was like this. We all followed a meal plan with specific amounts and types of food for each meal. The rule? Finish all your food within a certain amount of time, or they'll offer you a meal replacement drink called Boost. And if you refuse the Boost, they'll put a tube in your nose and give you the Boost that way instead. One of the most beautiful girls I know has spent a total of 14 months of her life in treatment. She was there months before I arrived, and for a while after I left. For all the time I knew her, I saw her only a few times without a tube taped to her cheek. Eventually, 
they had to find her another option so she could return to her faraway home. And when I finally saw her without the tube in her nose, it was after the surgery she had to put one in her stomach. And this beautiful girl, my friend, is only 14 years old. Being in treatment with the other girls brought me close to them in a very unique way. I was able to get to know them in this crazy way, and I can honestly say that they were some of the strongest, wisest, most intricately beautiful individuals I have ever encountered, and not one of them was a walking stereotype. My journey through treatment was tough, but I found that the real battle is out in the world. My eating disorder is a part of who I am, like it or not, but I long for the day that the thought of it will not once cross my mind. And I long for the day that I will no longer be ashamed of who I am because of what stereotypes define me as. I long for the day that no one with an eating disorder or any mental disorder will feel as though they have to carry their cross alone. And I pray every day for the beautiful girls that I know, that they won't have to suffer because of what they face from the world. And for all those I've never met, that they will never lose hope. Because going through everything that someone with an eating disorder goes through and coming out standing is an incredible thing. We get knocked to the ground by our perfect storm. And we have to pick ourselves up and rebuild our lives out of the broken pieces. And that is something to be proud of. That is something to be proud of. And yet we are still the punchline of jokes, insults, and stereotypes. I remember one time, right after I'd gotten out of treatment, I'd started at a new school. And at that point, I didn't have any friends in my everyday life who knew what I'd been going through. I was at a sleepover at a girl's house, and I remember thinking, oh, maybe this will be it, and maybe I can tell her, and maybe she'll understand. As we were getting ready for bed that night, the subject of eating disorders came up of their own accord, and I remember her saying, oh, I know all about eating disorders. I did a report on those last year, and they are so pathetic. Everyone with an eating disorder is pathetic. Pathetic? Pathetic, this is what she thought? This is what she would think of me if I told her who I really was? I just remember wanting to sink through the floor. But let me tell you, because I did more than a report, that there is nothing pathetic about an eating disorder. Another girl told me this story once. It was her second time around in treatment. Her very first day back to school after the first time around, a girl asked her this. Is everyone at the treatment center skinny? Or are they all big like you? Anorexic is not a body type. Our eating disorders may be a part of us, but they have never been and never will be a part that we choose. They may have shaped our lives, but they should never, ever define us. The connotations and lies that surround eating disorders make it nearly impossible for anyone who's battled one to find credibility among their peers. But until the world is ready to accept reality and not settle for a stereotype, every boy and girl who suffers from an eating disorder or any mental disorder will have to suffer just as much from the weight of the world and the mask that they wear to hide the war that they wage, because it is indeed a war. It is a war that no one should ever have to fight alone, and no one should ever be ashamed of. People with eating disorders are hungry for so much more than food. They're hungry for happiness. They're hungry for love. They're hungry for acceptance. Don't you dare let them starve. Thank you. <laughs>